This is a monumental review on this channel because in my nearly 20 years of Transformers collecting, that is weird to say, first of all, I have never once dabbled into the third party game. Everything I've got is first party, it's all official by Hasbro or Takara. That all changed when I went to TFCon and I picked up Mechanic Toys SA01B Sergeant based on Hearts of Steel Bumblebee, one of my favorite Bumblebee designs. So, on today's Deceptibot 9 reviews, let's go ahead and take a look at my first ever third party Transformers figure. Let's go! How's it going everyone? Deceptibot 9 here and thank you as always for joining me here on the channel. Now before we get into the review, I'd like to ask if you like what you see, go ahead, leave me a like. Plus, if you like what you see and you want to stay tuned for all of the future content I've got planned, go ahead, subscribe as well. It does really truly mean a lot to me. Plus, if you want to find me anywhere else on the internet, you can go ahead and find me on Twitter at Deceptibot9, TikTok at Deceptibot9, and on Instagram at Deceptibot9 reviews. All right, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a closer look at Mechanic Toys SA01B Sergeant. All right, and before we get to the figure itself, I do just want to really quick show off the packaging. It's a really nice package overall, and when I had when I got it in hand at the show, overall it just felt really nice, uh, nice heft to it. Overall, I really like the art. Um, of Sargent here on the side and the front. Here's a product shot on the back with a little bit of a bio. It did the train on the side. He looks, it just overall looks really great. The Steam Age banner on the top is really nice as well on the top of the box. Just shows off, you know, the name of the figure, Mechanic Toys with that art, but done in sort of like uh, a line art sketch type style, which is really nice. And on the bottom, nice big old warning sticker, just so you know that this is for older collectors and all of that jazz. So nice looking package overall. And one thing also that I did really like is it came with a card. It's I I love when figures come with cards. It was so nice during the Prime Wars trilogy when they all came with toys that had pe uh, tech specs and images on them. And so it's really nice to kind of harken back to this uh, card thing and get a little card that's got details on it, uh, you know, a little bio of the character himself and also product shots. So I just, I love getting the little card. And one last thing before we look at the actual figure himself, there is an other accessory that they included in the package, that being uh, little train tracks, which will come into play, obviously, when we transform him up into a train, but you did have to assemble this all by yourself. There was no instructions or anything going on with uh, the railroad tracks, but they do look really nice. It's just simple plastic all snapped together as a little railroad. Um, and I'm sure if you got, I think they had four other variants of this figure. Um, they had one that had a more traditional bumblebee head, I think called Wasp. They had uh, a cliff jumper colored one, this one, Sergeant, and then also another one that was like red and blue colored. So I wonder if you get all those, you can make like a big loop uh, track, which would be actually really, really cool and kind of inclines me to want to get the others of this. All right, and here is the main star, SA01B Sergeant himself all up in his robot mode and I do want to say off the top I am pretty impressed I think he looks really really solid overall he has a good feel to him and at $40 he's a little bit bigger than deluxe scale in robot mode at least overall he's got the same amount of uh, articulation range and probably a little bit more detail in paint apps than we would normally get as well. Transformation also seems fairly logical, maybe a little more complex than a, than a standard deluxe might be these days. But I do have a couple issues, a couple QC issues with him um, that I'll address really quick. So his head, I'll we can show it off a little bit more when we get closer to articulation, but his head like should be sitting right about here. Uh, I'm pushing on it, obviously, his antenna with my finger. As soon as I let it go, we'll see. It just kind of rises up. So my copy of Sargent is kind of always perpetually looking up at an angle. I don't know if that's intended or not. 
Um, it does look kind of nice in some poses like this. It looks very heroic, um, but sometimes I want them looking straight, so that is a little bit of a, of, a, of a downside. One of my other QC issues is this leg is slightly looser than I would like it to be. No big deal. That happens on, on mainline products. The one that annoys me the most, there's, they're kind of tied in together. One of these legs, one of these pieces, I can't remember if it's this side or the other side. I think it's the other side. Uh, it just pops out very easy sometimes during transformation. They're stuck in, in there nice and well right now. Nothing that a little glue won't fix to keep that from popping off. But then one of these headlights as well. This headlight is super easy to pop out. This one doesn't do that. This one is stuck in there very nicely, nice and glued in there. But this one, unfortunately, I just think didn't get... Uh, sat in the glue or whatever all the way so i'm gonna have to take some super glue to that piece it is kind of annoying uh transforming it sometimes when that piece will not stay in there but with those out of the way uh, overall solid i do really really like him uh overall and I'm, I'm really happy to add him into the collection so let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the details on sergeant shall we all right coming up first let's take a look at this head sculpt it is a really really nice head sculpt i like its style and its design overall um, like I mentioned, there is another version of this figure who is named Wasp, um, who has a more classic Bumblebee style head, which is a little more evocative of how he looks in the comic. But there's something about this head on this body that I like just a little bit more, and I'm not quite sure why. So that's why I picked Sergeant over Wasp at TFCon. But you can see the head does look nice. It's got a, a nice molded detail in it, like these screws coming out as his antennas. We got all these little screws and rivets going on here. Uh, nice blue eyes with the pale white face and some more screws that are painted gold here with the little talk box chin is really really nice overall onto the chest nice big bulbous chest and you can see of course it's got some nice gold uh paint on the sort of the side valves and the what will become the top of the train right here but now is his like window chest plate in robot mode um and some nice rivet detail all over in the comic this would have a big autobot symbol on it but of course because this is a third party figure uh for legal reasons they cannot put a um, Autobot sticker there, so I'm gonna need to get some toy hacks or something to throw on there. Uh, the shoulder panels or the shoulder pads look fantastic as well. These form the front of the train in, in vehicle mode and they look really nice. They got a lot of nice detail on them. We'll take a closer look at those as they are intended to be train pieces when we get to train mode. Uh, if you kind of move those out of the way, you can see nice, just simple black shoulder, simple bumblebee design here with the sort of rivet or um, divot detail in the arms plus. The actual arm itself has got some nice detail on it, some rivets on this side, and a nice little gear over here on this side. The hands, also nicely molded as well. They look really nice. All these fingers coming out. Bit of a trigger finger, even though he only comes with, you know, a hammer, so <laughs> not sure why that is, but they look nice overall. Coming down here to his sort of ab section, you can see there is some nice silver paint going on in there uh, with some silver molded or some molded detail on the abs, which look great. I do wish this had carried down to this little crotch area. Uh, a little bit of silver, I think, would have helped this out, but you can still see there's some nice detail right there on the crotch piece. Coming down to the legs, these pieces right here, nothing nothing crazy. It's a little standard. Um, inside of the legs, though, this is, I was surprised to see this. There's a lot of detail on the inside of the legs, a lot of interior mechanical detail, which is really, really cool, even with some paint here, some sort of copper color paint on this gear, but then all this other molded detail in here, these pistons and, and whatnot, look really really nice on the inside of there so that's cool to see silver paint here on the shin look nice with some nice rivet detail some silver paint on the headlight pieces the foot pieces which will become the sort of front train guard look great as well um I do really like it overall how that looks coming to the side of the leg. We got the train wheels, of course, and these little pieces. I'm not a train uh, expert, even though I do like trains. Um, whatever this is called. Looks nice. Um, although I will note that on the package, it did vary. And this piece was colored silver in the product shot, which I really wish they had kept to the, re the mass release because I think the silver would help sort of break up the wheels being and this piece being all yellow. But... What are you going to do? Uh, coming down here to the feet, we got these pieces that are nicely sort of piston-y pieces uh, as heel spurs, which look great. Coming to the back, you see just a little bit more of that detail there and some, some detail on the heel spurs, which we'll see a little bit more in train mode on the bottom underside. And then here's just the rest of his back. So this little piece up here looks nice. Uh, we'll fold up behind him, obviously. And then there's 
you know, these little square pieces as his back. So overall, Sergeant looks really, really nice in robot mode. I do really, really enjoy overall how he looks. Of course, we have to give credit to the original design, but I think it was just executed very well here in uh, toy form. Now, really quick, let's go ahead and take a look at the accessory. Um, we looked at the train track already, so this is his only other accessory is this hammer, which I love. This looks so, so cool. There's not a lot of detail going on here, but the, the, the way it looks overall just is really, really nice, and especially the way it looks in his hand. He just looks so cool, like he is ready to either beat up Decepticons or put together a railroad. It's just, it's really cool overall, that aesthetic and design. So, let's go ahead, really quick, take a look at articulation on this guy. And I will say for the most part, it's all right. I was hoping for a little bit more. I don't know exactly off the top of my head when this figure released, um, but there are some things on here that I wish would be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and go through it real quick. First of all, the head, I don't believe it's on a ball joint. I think it's just on a swivel and a hinge because the swivel goes all the way around, which is really nice, and then the hinge just pop, 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 but he can't, you know, really tilt side to side or anything. So head range is okay. Of course, we talked about my problem with it rising up. The arms here are on a ball joint, but due to the nature of the shoulder pads, they can't really go all the way around. But since they're on ball joints, you know they could. They can go up this far, which is about as far as they go before the shoulder pads anyway. Swivel at the bicep here. Elbow bend is fairly solid. It's a little bit over 90, which is not terrible. The wrist, though, has nothing, which is unfortunate. That's one of the things. I wish he had wrist swivel there, um, but technically he does have a bit of a hinge if you want to bend it back. That is for transformation, but you could do that like with the hammer here. Booyah. You could sort of get him to hold it like that, which does look really neat, um, but I wish it had a swivel there as well. Upper torso has got a swivel here which is really nice and you can also get an ab crunch out of it partially due to transformation so you can crunch him a little bit which looks cool or you could have him go back which i do really like and that's something that i wish uh regular transformers had a little bit more of so even though he doesn't have wrists he's got an ab crunch which is really nice legs go forward that far they go backwards that far as well they're on ball joints so they will also go out into a Basically a full split. There goes my headlight piece again. All right. They swivel up here at the thigh. They have a knee bend, which goes basically about 90. And the feet, these ones are kind of weird. Uh, it's not really an ankle pivot, because, but it also kind of is. So the front piece here, the front like tr grill piece, is on a ball joint. The actual foot piece itself isn't, but then the heel spur is also on a, on a joint. So you can kind of, I mean, you can basically get ankle out of it because he can twist his feet and his heel spur all the way over, which is neat. Uh, you can also get a little bit of just up and down hinging out of it. So for the most part, Sargent is posable in the way we've come to see with a lot of these modern figures. He's pretty on par with the uh, first party official stuff. My biggest gripe is I wish he could hold the hammer with two hands uh, because that's just such a cool look. Uh, and I would love if he would be able to execute that i mean he kind of can if you get him going like that that's about it which doesn't look terrible but i wish he could do it a little bit more in front of his chest so but what are you gonna do anyways he's got an ab crunch <laughs> all right let's see how sergeant looks compared with some other modern figures shall we all right first off here he is with the Netflix Walmart exclusive Earthrise Bumblebee. So you can kind of see how this Bumblebee compares with just a very classic um, G1 style Bumblebee. Following that, here he is with Target exclusive Buzzworthy Bumblebee Origins Bumblebee, one of my favorite Bumblebees in recent years. Here he is with Studio Series Dark of the Moon Bumblebee. So you can kind of see they're now fairly similar in terms of scale. And another fairly recent Bumblebee, that being Earthspark Bumblebee. And just so we can see how Sargent compares with an Optimus Prime, here he is with Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime, a sort of standard Voyager class scale figure. Um, overall, I don't think I hate the way these two look together, to be completely honest with you, but it would be nice to have a Hearts of Steel uh, designed Optimus Prime in my collection now that I've got a Bumblebee. All right, let's go ahead and get Sargent transformed up into his locomotive mode.
All right, and here is Sergeant, transformed up into his little locomotive mode. And I honestly, I really, really like it. I think it is super cute, super adorable, and it just, it looks overall really, really nice. And he kind of shrinks up. He is quite tiny in his train mode compared to uh, his robot mode, but he looks great. It's such a cool little train design, and I think overall it's executed very well as a transformer there's a few moments in transformation um like for the most part it's it's pretty straightforward and understandable uh there's one thing i think is really cool is the way these panels here uh rotate around to bulk him out a little bit more in robot mode but then to kind of complete this spherical look in train mode i think is really really neat uh and then the sort of coming together at the end can be a little fiddly like as you saw again my light popped off there on that transformation part but overall just once you get everything connected he is fairly sturdy and he won't really go uh anywhere but again he looks nice he's a fun it's a, it's a fairly fun transformation and it's pretty on par he is just trying to roll it's pretty on par with um most modern oh my lord <laughs> with most modern deluxe figures so what do you say we go ahead and take a closer look at some of the details here on train mode so there's not a whole lot of new things exposed here on train mode because we kind of saw all of this in robot mode. It's just kind of, you know, lined up and placed how it should be as a train now. So looking here at the front of the train looks really nice. The two halves of the shoulders or the the halves of the two shoulder pieces come together quite nicely to form the front of this train. Here is what was the feet as now the kind of front skirt. We got the nice headlights, all the sort of same detail we saw overall on the robot mode here remains. We got all this nice rivet detail and some of this line detail going on here. There's that chest piece that looks really nice with all the extra gold and stuff. There's a little bit of silver there as well. So overall, train mode looks really, really cool. This is one problem too, is these panels don't seem to want to go up all the way. This is slightly annoying, uh, trying to make sure everything's lined up and those pieces don't quite sit all the way but that's all right coming down here the underside or the more bottom side of things this was the side of the feet now it's sort of that little piston that helps the wheel move is really nice the two are the wheels are very very nice as well coming to the side here's where those little gears on the arms were the hands uh if you don't display the weapon in a certain way which i'm going to talk about in a minute the hands are exposed now for a while i was like wow this is pretty glaringly bad um, not glaringly bad, I guess that's the wrong term, but for a $40 third-party figure, I hear people talk about third-party figures all the time being better than Hasbro. I figured they wouldn't expose the hands, but turns out there's a purpose for it, so it's all right. Coming here to the bottom, there's not really a lot of, you know, exposed robot kibble here on the bottom. Uh, there is, obviously, this is the bottom of the knees, so there's a little bit of that robotic detail going on there, and those are the arms. So really whole, not a whole lot, which is nice and so yeah i mean nice little train and now okay let's talk about some stuff with the accessories so here's the hammer and the hammer has two things you can do with it one of them is not explicitly in, uh, explained in the instructions what it tells you to do for storage in the instructions is there's this little hole here that is formed by uh what was his heel spurs and it just it's like a little peg hole and you just slide the hammer handle through there and the hammer will rest under the bottom and you can store it and it's a nice and clean little mode um i do find that though sometimes that if things aren't aligned correctly and those don't stay that way it can get a little loose and a little floppy and kind of hinder the the smoothness of rolling because he rolls super smooth i haven't had anything that rolls this smooth in a long while um so then that takes me to i kept wondering why the hands are exposed that's a weird choice and then i noticed something with the hammer i noticed he's gonna try to roll that it has a hinge on it and i was like why the hell does this thing have a hinge on it and then i saw that it's got pegs and i was like whoa that's weird but here's what you're supposed to do with it you fold the pegs out you hinge the hammer down these pegs are exactly the same size as the distance between these two hands so you slide those five millimeter pegs into the hands and he's got a little he's got a little extra piece on him you can help him roll or whatever and i have i have no idea why <laughs> they put this here but honestly sometimes i kind of like it more 
than putting it underneath. I don't know. There's something about it that is, it's really cute. <laughs> I kind of really like it and you can grab it and it helps him roll along. It's really, really handy. Um, and I don't know why they didn't mention it in the instructions at all, but oh well, there it is. While we're talking about accessories, I told you I'd come back to it. Here's the train track piece. It's really, really fun how they include this. And his wheels, the little wheel divots, will fit on the inside of the tracks. So he can sit on the track as long as everything uh, lines up correctly. Put the wheels there on the inside of the track. And he's got a nice little track to roll on. It's so, so fun. I just, I love that they would include an accessory like this because it honestly just helps add to his look overall. And of course, I mean, he's a train, so there's not really many places he can ride besides a train track. So it really makes sense that this is included in here. Um, and let's go ahead and see how he looks with some of those other figures that we showed off earlier, shall we? Just so we can get a size comparison. All right, first off, here he is with uh, Earthrise Bumblebee. You can kind of see size comparison. They're fairly close when it comes to length. Um, obviously, in uh, height, the train is going to be taller than the bug, which makes sense. Here he is with Origins Bumblebee. You can see, looks very nice together. Bumble this one is wider, obviously, uh, <laughs> but not taller. Here he is with Studio Series Dark of the Moon Bumblebee, so you can see the Camaro to Locomotive comparison there. Here he is with Earth Spark Bumblebee. You can see that. And last but not least, with Optimus Prime as a truck. I don't I want to say I don't think this scale uh, fits. <laughs> I don't know what a small little locomotive train is compared to an 18-wheeler, but I feel like regardless, it's probably bigger. All right, that's going to do it for my closer look at uh, Sergeant. So let's go ahead and chugga-chugga-choo-choo <laughs> on back up to me <laughs> for my final thoughts. All right, so what are my final thoughts on the little bumblebee that could here? Well, I think overall he is a lot of fun. As my first third party figure. I think it was a pretty solid choice overall. I think his robot mode looks great. I think his train mode looks fantastic. Um, transformation I feel like could have been engineered a little bit better. There is a little bit of fiddliness that happens with some pieces but overall I am quite pleasantly surprised and happy with the figure overall. Definitely means I might need to start getting some more third party figures soon so We'll see. All right, guys, that is going to do it for my full review of Mechanic Toys SA01B Sergeant. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this figure down below. Uh, and if you think there's any other third-party releases that I should definitely try to go after, go ahead and let me know that down below. Tell me about your favorites. Uh, third party figures down below. I've been tempted by Planet X figures before, especially the Dinobots. So if you got opinions about those too, let me know. But let's go ahead and talk all things third party Transformers and SA01B Sergeant down below. So, guys, as always, thank you for tuning in and making it all the way to the very end of the episode. I appreciate it very, very much. As always, I've been your host, Deceptibot9. Thank you, as always, for joining me here, and I'll see you guys later.